Hello friends, this video on light part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we have discussed one major aspect of what is needed for us to see that is light. So we have discussed reflection of light. Yeah, we have also discussed the dispersion of light. But which part of our body helps us to see? That is eye. So now we will spend some time trying to understand the structure and the function of eye. So eye is one of the most important organ of our body which helps us to see the beautiful things around us. But eye can see things only in, I mean reflection has to happen. Without that, our eye will not be able to help us to see things. So if you talk about the structure, uh, they are roughly spherical in shape. But when you look at an eye from outside, it doesn't look spherical. But basically it is spherical, but it is just that it is placed inside a socket. So what we see is only the upper portion of the eye. But actually, if you look at it sideways, it is nothing but a spherical kind of a structure which is inserted inside a socket. So from outside, the major portion of the eye which is seen is the white colored layer and this outer white coat is a tough layer and it is protective in nature. Now inside that we have all delicate organs. We have a lens so that image formation can take place. So obviously it needs protection. Right. So for that purpose, we have this white coat so that uh, it is quite tough and it can protect all the internal parts of the eye. So let us quickly look at the various components of eye. So this is a side view of an of a human eye. So let us see what are the different parts of eye. So they are cornea, aqueous humor, pupil, iris, lens, ciliary muscles, vitreous humor, retina and optic nerves. So these are the important components of eye. So here in this picture, you can already see them labeled, but we will spend time understanding each of them. So first, let us look where are they located. First is cornea. So cornea is like the outermost layer. So as you can see here, this outermost layer is cornea. Next is aqueous humor. The name itself suggests aqueous, something watery. So the watery fluid which is present here, that is aqueous humor. Third is pupil. So pupil is nothing but this opening in the eye. So you see a black spot at the center of your eye, which is very small. The, at the, exactly at the center, you see a black spot. So that is nothing but pupil. Next is iris. Now this pupil is surrounded by another structure, which is which is seen in different colors in different person. So in somebody it is blue in color, in somebody it is brown in color. And that's how we say that that, that girl has brown eyes because the color of the iris is brown. So iris can be of different colors like black, brown or blue. So and this iris is present surrounding the pupil. So you see this part is pupil and surrounding the pupil is iris. Next is the lens. So here you can see the lens very clearly. This is the lens. After that, we have ciliary muscles. So where are the ciliary muscles? They are located here. So you see the lens is supported by these muscular structure. So the ciliary muscles will help to help in the movement of the lens. It helps to adjust the focal length of the lens. Next is vitreous humor. This is again another fluid which is present in this area. So the fluid which is present in the outer portion of the eye that is aqueous humor and this uh, fluid which fills the entire inner part of the eye is vitreous humor. Next is retina which is the most important part. So you see this inner layer is retina and image formation happens here. So this is the place where image is formed and only if image gets formed we will be able to see things and the retina is connected to the brain through the optic nerves. So you see these optic nerves, they, they are going to connect the eye to the brain and then brain helps us to perceive what we see. So eye helps to create images, but what are those images? What do they mean? So all those perception comes from the brain. So the communication between the eye and the brain happens through the optic nerves. So these are the major components. So now we will discuss each of these components one by one. So let us start with cornea. 
So cornea, as I said, is the outermost membrane through which light enters. So this is a comparatively very thin membrane. Why is it thin? And because we also want light to enter inside the eye because as long as light doesn't enter inside, reflection cannot take place. And if reflection doesn't happen, image formation will not take place. If there is no image being formed, then we cannot see anything. Right. So this cornea actually allows light to enter inside. So it doesn't stop like that. The entire amount of light is allowed to enter. Then comes the aqueous huber, which is this space, this fluid, which fills the space immediately after cornea. It is fluid, mostly water, to maintain the correct pressure balance of the eye. So there is a pressure inside the eye, which should not be very less, nor should it be very high. So that is why it is called aqueous. Aqua means water. Since it is mostly made up of water, so it is called the aqueous humor. After that comes the pupil. Now pupil is an important part because this controls the amount of light entering inside the eye. So if you see, this is like an opening here. So through this opening, light will enter. Now how much light has to enter will be decided by the size of the pupil. Now. The size of the pupil in turn is decided by iris because if you see here, this part is iris. Now, if you look at this picture, this colored part which you see is iris and this part which you see is pupil. So, this is pupil and this is iris. Now, iris will control the size of the pupil. So, sideways, if you see this one is iris and this one is pupil. So this opening is pupil. Now whenever there is too much of light present in the surroundings, that time we do not want that entire light to enter inside. So in that case what happens? The size of the pupil decreases. How it decreases? Because the iris comes together. So when the iris comes together, so obviously a very small opening is left behind. So the pupil size decreases. But when there is dim light, we want more and more light to enter. So the iris will move apart and the size of the pupil will increase. So basically the size of the pupil is decided by iris, but how much is the opening? That is what is the size of the pupil that decides how much light will enter inside the eye. And this is very important because if too much of light suddenly enters inside the eye, that might damage the retina. Similarly, if every time there is less light entering inside the eye, that will also affect the image formation process. So it is an aperture in front of the lens. So if you see this opening is just in front of the lens. This is the lens just in front of the lens. You have this opening so that the light can enter through the pupil and then it can I mean, go through the lens. The diameter of pupil is regulated by iris. So iris is muscular in structure. That is why iris can contract and expand. And that's how it can control the size of the pupil. But iris is an opaque structure. That means light cannot pass through iris because iris is all opaque. So whatever light has to enter inside the eye will have to enter through the pupil. So but iris gives a distinct color to our eye. That, that's what I was telling you, right? Some people have blue eyes, some have brown eyes, some have uh, black eyes. So all these different eye colors are due to the different colors of the iris. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.